undo, undo. <laughs> I retweeted it from my own account. <laughs> <laughs> the immediate retweet is maybe a little goofy, but I'll take it. Um, okay, so let's switch over to video mode. All right. Um, so, Kent, thank you so much for, for coming in. I really appreciate it. Um, it looks yeah. like the, the ads are running on Twitch right now. I wonder if there's a way to make that go away. Yeah, um, I would be willing to pay to make that go away. That's, I guess, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I guess what it is. Do. It is what it is. But uh, yeah. cool. So, Kent, thank you for coming on today. I'm I'm super excited to to have you here, um, especially because we're talking about um, testing, which like like you're the the current king of testing on the internet. So, um. <laughs> okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's like devil. Here we go. <laughs> um, but yeah, so let's uh, let's maybe do a, a quick intro. I know that you just had like a big career change. Um, mm -hmm. and so I'd love to just maybe give an intro to everybody and talk about who you are, what you do, all that good stuff. Yeah. So, um, I, uh, actually, if you go to my website, you can find out all about me, go to kentcdodds.com slash info. And, uh, this is what I give to like conference organizers and other events and stuff from like my bio and stuff. But the most important thing is that stuff at the top, how to, properly use my name <laughs> I've got, um, all of those variants i have either heard or seen in print so yeah does kent somebody dogs. actually call you kent dogs <laughs> that the, on the phone i was talking with somebody i said my name they're like was that kent dogs <laughs> <laughs> no no that's not kent dogs uh, but anyway, yeah, so I, I do a lot on open source. I created testingjavascript.com. Um, I, and yeah, I was, uh, working for PayPal up until about a month ago. Uh, while I was at PayPal, I, um, represented PayPal on the TC 39 for a while. That was kind of cool, kind of interesting. Um, and, uh, yeah, now I am a full-time educator making things like testingjavascript.com and, um, I just started doing online workshops uh, or like re remote workshops. I've done them before, but now as a full-time uh, guy, I can do this more. Um, and then I've got in-person workshops and I do, um, yeah, just lots of, lots of stuff teaching people how to workshop uh, or how to do things um, with uh, lots of these workshops. I've got a lot more things coming up. Um, and uh, this page will probably change a lot when I when I have everything. But basically, what's going to happen is this page will turn into a here are all the workshops that I'm currently offering, mm -hmm. and you can sign up for the one that you're interested in. And when we have enough signups, then I'll host one. Um, so it'd be pretty sweet. Um, yeah. We sold out of our first. I, I just listed the first workshop yesterday, and it sold out in like 12 hours. Congratulations! So that that's cool. that's very cool. People are excited about hooks. So. <laughs> yeah, we, we did a, a live stream. Uh, Sid from the Gatsby team and I did a live stream about hooks and uh, it had one of the like a record high attended. So that was that was pretty cool. Um, yeah. All right. So what are we going to do today? I think we, we talked a little bit about maybe adding some tests to your website, actually. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so I um, I built this. I, I actually I should clarify i did not build this website um as cool as it would be for me to say that i i created it um i got a lot of help from uh Vojta. if you scroll down yeah to the contributors that third one there Vojta, he did pretty much almost all of it um and then i've been making changes to it adding content and everything um but yeah he works for egghead and egghead has um been super awesome um helping me get this stuff off the ground so and then obviously a whole bunch of other contributors here have done um done different work to help which is why i list them all here because they're awesome people um yeah in including you there jason i um part <laughs> of I, I based this off of um egghead starter kit and um the uh um egghead starter kit is is based off of yours i think um or, mm -hmm. or with ideas mm -hmm. stolen from your website so um, yeah, yeah, perfect. Thanks for that. Awesome. So, um, so yeah, I went ahead and got your site downloaded, and you know, we were talking a little bit about 
the um, Gatsby MDX is still, we're still working on getting that to 1.0. So it's a little bit mm -hmm. slow. So I went ahead and like got everything cloned and, and started ahead of time. So it's, uh, it's only taken about 30, 30 ish seconds to get the site rolling, um, mm -hmm. which should give us a, uh, a little, little more time to talk about kind of what's our plan. So yeah, let's, let's talk about that. So actually, if you go to the testing JavaScript site again, um, I'll, let's look at that testing trophy to talk like high or yeah, like broad picture of what we're trying to accomplish here. So uh, at the bottom of that trophy, you see static. Um, so this is like uh, ESLint and TypeScript. Um, so I have ESLint in the project. Um, uh, I think I do actually, now that I think about it, I, I might not um, have added that yet, uh, which is like pretty Let's bad. See. I think it's in there, it's gotta be in there, but I don't have any oh, yeah, um, commit hooks. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, so I don't have any pre-commit hooks. So when I commit, like it just goes straight through. And if I've got linting errors or anything, that's gonna, that's gonna be what is there. So um, I'm kind of thinking maybe the uh, a really good first step would be to add a pre-commit hook um, that runs linting across all of our our stuff, um, just to make sure that we're not committing anything that uh, fails linting because. The, that base, that static stuff, that mm -hmm. is the easiest thing to to get implemented in any project is just like, let's get that implemented. So we can run ESLint manually, that's that's fine, or, or you can rely on your editor, but I, it's even better to have it, uh, have linting happen as you're making your commits. So I'm gonna give you a, um, a link to a place where you can check out how that can be set up. Let me just make sure I, I've got it set up in here. Pre-commit, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna be actually basing a lot of this stuff off of um, content that I have on testing JavaScript. Okay. Um, if I can find where the chat stuff is, somewhere around here, there it is. So let me shoot you a link over to that. Where'd the chat window go? There it is. Um, so it, I'm, I'm shooting you a link to the package JSON, but you're going to need to look in a different file as well. Okay, so um, let's drop this here, and then I'm also going to drop it into the Twitch chat. Um, cool. So this is the lint staged configuration. Sorry, did you have a question real quick? I didn't. No, I was. Uh, I'm just kind of as we're throwing things in here. Oops. Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, just repeating what you're saying and, and dropping it into Twitch. So yeah, good. cool. Yeah. So um, to do this, basically, our, the idea here is I want whenever I'm committing code to my project, I want to run um, certain things on that code to make sure that I'm not committing something that's broken. Right. I never want to commit something that's broken, especially if I can run it really quickly locally, because mm -hmm. uh, then I'm still in the right mindset to fix that problem. Um, because like we I do have CI. I'm running everything on Netlify. It's running all the tests and all that stuff. Uh, well, it has no test, but it's at least running the the uh, linting and, and the build and all that. But if I can um, run some of that locally, then I can catch those those issues. Because if it if it runs on CI and it breaks, you know that's maybe 20 minutes later that I find out about that, and I have to change whatever I've gotten into, switch context back over to fix that little silly thing that I messed up. Yeah, you've so like moved the, on to the next task. Yeah, exactly. So the the quicker I can tighten that feedback loop, the better. So um, this is actually, now it occurs to me that this is configured um, in the old way. So let me find you a, a, another example of where um, this is configured properly. Okay. Um, I just published a new package yesterday. Um, and so that one definitely is gonna have up-to-date configuration. Um, I'm going to add a, a note about this, that this package is a, a custom hook that uh, Dan has told me is probably not a good idea. So uh, don't don't use the hook <laughs> if you can help it. But uh, uh, but there's the configuration right there um, for how you get um, your tool called Husky, which we'll install here in a second, to run um, a script before a commit happens. Mm. So so. Um, we're, we're not going to be using KCD scripts. We'll, okay. That's my open source uh, tool thing. We'll, we'll be using something else, but got it. Um, that's, that's the way that you configure uh, the Husky tool. Great. So should we 
dive in and do it? Yeah, let's do it. So you're going to need two tools. Husky is going to be responsible for actually running a script. And then uh, Lint Staged is going to be responsible for, um, uh, for configuring what uh, scripts to run on certain files. So you'll install Husky and Lint dash staged. And we're doing, and I, I kind of just did this automatically, but I, I set this to be dev dependencies. Is that correct? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. In fact, everything that we do today will be all dev dependencies. <clears throat> all right. So let those get installed and Ooh, yeah. Okay, so we've got them, and now we can see we've got Husky and Lint staged in here. So yeah. um, right below the scripts is probably the best place to do that uh, right, to add it. this config. So you'll do Husky, and then in here you'll um, that's an object, and then that will be um, what is that hooks? <laughs> I've already forgotten. Yeah, hooks, but not the React hooks. <laughs> this is Git hooks, uh, and that's an object. Okay. And then pre-commit is the hook that we want. So this is, is going to run a script before commit happens. And, so and the script you, we want to run. Can you talk um, a little bit about how this works, like what Husky does? Yeah, sure. So um, Git, actually, if you scroll up on the left in your file explorer there um, and look at, there should be a .git directory. It looks like you don't have it there. Uh, I, th I think it gets auto-hidden, so let me... Uh... Yeah, maybe you're hiding it. But yeah, if you list the files, you'll see a uh, .git directory. Um, and inside of there is the hooks directory. Inside of the hooks directory is um, a bunch of samples, examples. Uh, well, actually, when you installed Husky, it created all of these files. Mm -hmm. um, and so when this file exists, before um, Git is going to do any of these, um, um, any of these operations, like pre-commit, then it's going to first check in this directory and say, hey, do you have any script files? that um, are associated with the operation I'm about to perform. If you do, then I'm going to run those script files. And so Husky generates some script files that will essentially look up your package JSON for the configuration. And if you have a script specified in there, um, then it will run that, that script. The reason this is useful is because this hooks directory is not committed to the Git repository, so it's all local. Mm -hmm. And so Husky allows us to have a, uh, a place that, or, or have some scripts that are uh, shared across machines, across uh, developers on the team, and so that you don't have to set up these hooks manually every time. You just install your dependencies, and there it is. That's great. Um, so what we're doing here, then, is we're saying that before we commit anything, so when we run git commit, uh, before so we, we do that, we're going to run this lint command. staged. Lint staged. Okay, now if I just run lint staged, like if I go in here and I do, what would it be? Um, yarn bin lint staged. Yep. That's just going to pick up. Or you can do npx lint staged or however you want to do oh, that. Oh, yeah. For, oh, yeah. I never use lint. I used, I need to use npx more, more often. Um, yeah, it's pretty legit. npx lint staged. Let's try it here. Yeah, so we, we don't have any configuration, which is what it's complaining about. Um, uh, okay. So let's let's get that configuration all set up. I think that link to the config that I sent you earlier, or did I send you that? Yeah, I did. I think so. Um, that that will be a perfect starting point. We'll just uh, leave off, or we'll swap Jest um, for ESLint, uh, but we can leave Prettier in there because that's that's going to be great. And actually, um, yeah, why don't you just copy all that and then I'll I'll tell you what changes to make. We, we'll need to make a couple changes. Okay, so I'm going to create. In here, we're going to create a new file, and that was going to be called lint-stage.config.js. Config.js. Paste that in here. And yeah, we want to I'm do... actually looking, because uh, I think I might have a better config to share with you. Um, there we go because we're doing kind of the static side of things. So and this is the material for, oh, snap, let's see. Yeah, let, let me get you this, this file. This one's um, an RC file, but it's it works the same. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so this repo is um, the material for my, um, the static testing tools part of testingjavascript.com. Um, and this is actually exactly what we want. Um, okay. So. 
So this is going just, to, on JavaScript files, run ESLint, and on everything, run prettier, and then add the, add the result? That's right. Yep, exactly. So on everything that prettier supports, if that file has changed, then we'll run prettier on it. Okay, and, and should I should I rename this to lint stage RC? Uh, no, you can leave it as a exports and just yeah replace the you'll you'll do a module exports. Yep. Okay. And if you've got uh, and uh, yeah, so you've got prettier set up in in your editor, it'll format everything nice. Oh okay. man, prettier so good. It's it makes me I so love happy. Prettier. <laughs> oh, it's so great. Okay, so we've got so, our lint staged. Let's uh, let's just run it again. So we'll yeah, do yeah. the npx lint staged. So no you don't stage have any files. stage files. Okay. So if you look at your git status, so you've got a couple modified files. You've got one new file. So if you add one of those, um, maybe just add all of them. Um, uh, let me check out a branch. Um, sure. Do you have a, a branch convention that you like, or do you care? I don't. I don't care what you do. I have a, one that I follow, but I don't care what uh, what convention you use. Okay, so now if we cool. run lint staged, it should hit these files, right? Yep. Boom. So it ran ESLint and it ran prettier for everything. It runs it, um, it actually is kind of interesting. It, it runs them in parallel and that works fine for us because um, I have ESLint configured to not care about anything that prettier is going to fix. Mm -hmm. So if ESLint runs before prettier, then it, it doesn't make a difference. Um, okay. So cool. Now, if you look at those files, um, then, uh, or look at your git status again here real quick. So everything was changed and then added. Mm -hmm. um, actually, probably nothing was changed uh, because you have your editor configured uh, for prettier anyway. Yeah, let's, so, let's break that. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's see, preferences. And for people watching who are like, wait, I thought we were going to talk about testing. Um, this is a really important part of testing um, to... Uh, um, I think what you're looking for is auto format or something. Yeah. Format on save. Huh. If that's what I wanted. Yeah. <laughs> that's interesting. Um, format on save. No? Yeah, that's weird. Okay, let's. Format on save. And we'll set that to false. Oh. Cool. So this should now stop helping. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm going to break this in Vim because uh, yeah, that's what I always do too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, anyway, as as I was saying, it's really um, like the the base of the testing trophy is that static stuff. So we we don't have time to add something like um, TypeScript or Flow to this project. Um, I, it is in the future, probably. I, I will probably add TypeScript. Um, but uh, I, um, I think it's really like this is a really low cost, really fast way that you can um, add or uh, start adding value to your uh, projects without spending a whole lot of time um, doing things. Um, and, it, and it provides, you know, maybe not as much value as 100% code coverage or whatever, but um, a great deal of value. Um, in my mind, so. Cool, so, cool. so, so where we're thing. at right now, we've got git status. So when I commit this, it should run the, the check. check. Okay, so we're gonna do chore setup uh, pre-commit hooks. Pre-coming hooks. <laughs> That's Did right. I spell it wrong? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, and now we're cool. going to fix that, git commit amend and this is the way that you hide your shame yeah <laughs> yeah and you can only do that before you push <laughs> um okay. if you're on a branch you force push all you want man <laughs> <laughs> all right so i'm also going to fork this i have the hub tools installed um nice. so that i can do that so let me do git push send it to my branch and live stream tests and um so anybody who wants to can follow along live as we as we get these built um, but yeah, let's see here. So now we've, so we've got staging. Um, I think now if we go up and we look, we can see, 
I've got my own branch set up here and it would just show kind of what we've and changed. And it fixed it. And it did yeah, fix man, it. Yeah, man, that is yeah. mergeable. That is excellent. Okay, so cool. um, we'll just Let's create. keep going. Yeah. Do you, want to, do you want to put all the tests into one PR? Yeah, we'll, we'll just do it all in one, one PR. Oh, well, I guess we'll do it in two now because I just created that one. Or I guess no, I can keep pushing against this branch. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. So then what? Okay, cool. Yeah, so we, um, uh, if we go back to the testing trail for you to get ourselves re, um, resituated with, with our goals here, that would be good. Let's go back to so, the trophy here. Yeah. Sweet. So like I said, uh, static includes, um, and, and by the way, prettier is a testing tool. It, um, it may not seem that way, but it, it legitimately is because it will format your code in a way that um, uh, reveals certain aspects of your code um, and can help you realize how um, things are actually going to run at runtime. It'll add a semicolon in a weird place and you're like, wait, why is it doing that? And then you figure out, oh, you put a, uh, you know, started a line with the open bracket or something like that. Um, and so Prettier is a, a testing tool, static testing tool, and uh, ESLint is a static testing tool. And if we had time, we'd do TypeScript too, probably, but that'll take a lot more effort. So we're gonna mm -hmm. we're gonna leave that where it is, and I'm going to skip um, unit and integration, go straight to end to end. And the reason that we're gonna do that is because you can get a huge amount of value with just one end to end test. And so it is another very low effort, high value thing that you can do um, is by adding just one end-to-end -end test to your project. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to install Cypress. So if you go to Cypress.io, you can and send that link to, to people on Twitch. Um, Cypress.io. Mm -hmm. All right. So that is what we're going to do. Uh, you can yarn add Cypress as a dev uh, dependency. And we'll make this thing uh, magically happen. I'm into and if this. If you want so, to start so, the site in another uh, terminal window or something, so you can just have that running in the background. Sure. That'd be good. Uh, let's see. What was it? Yarn Dev. Yep. Booyah. All right. So we're installing Cypress. So what Cypress does um, is it actually is an Electron app. And um, it, it, of course, it runs headlessly as well, so you can run it in CI and stuff. But when you're developing locally, it's a um, a headless ele or it's a an Electron app that um, has the full Chrome browser. It uses Chromium um, to run all of your tests. And what's really cool about Cypress, one one of my favorite parts about Cypress, is that um, the browser that is running your tests is basically just like the regular Chrome you're used to developing with every day. Mm -hmm. And so what that means is you have full access to developer tools. You can even get your React um, dev tools working uh, pretty easily. Uh, yeah, tons of really cool things that you can do um, just um, because Cypress is built um, like inside of the browser. So, um, and it's actually pretty straightforward to configure. Um, so once this gets started up, then we can um, um, run Cy. Oh shoot! And I, I always have a, a commit uh, or a, a npm script, so now I can't remember what, what the. Let's see. I think we me... we still have one up here that that we can look at. Um, yeah, if you go to the Jess Cypress React Babel Webpack <laughs> project, that has all of the scripts that we'll ultimately um, want. So yeah, it'll Package. be Cypress Run as well, or, or sorry, Cypress Open is what we'll start with. Here. Yeah. Okay. So we'll take. We'll just copy that out wholesale. Um, yep. I'm going to add that to our scripts here. Perfect. OK. And let's see. Is it done? It is. So now we nice. can just do yarn sci open, right? Sci yep. open. And do I have to do anything first? Nope. So what this is going to do is it'll pull up the Electron app on your machine, and it's going to generate a bunch of files. Um, well, yeah, first it says, hey, it's the first time we're going to verify things are good. And you'll notice that it actually installed cypress.app inside your library caches Cypress directory. Oh, cool. um, yeah, so it's it'll be shared across all of your projects that are using that same version of Cypress. So yeah, it helps you get started with a whole bunch of files. Uh, we're going to delete pretty much all of these, but um, if you just hit OK, got it, okay. then you can click run, run all specs in the top right. 
And uh, this will run all of those auto-generated tests uh, for you. It pulls up a window that looks remarkably like Chrome. Yeah, so that's exactly what it is. Um, we'll allow that. And yeah, go ahead and <laughs> give it all access to all the things, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Make it fit in the window here. Yeah. OK. Um, so um, I'm, I think maybe like we could take a little bit of time to, to dive into lots of this stuff, but I think maybe we should focus on, on just getting a test working and then we can explore what's going on. Uh, but yeah, you can watch this thing run. It's actually pretty cool to watch all of the stuff that it does. So, it, um, so this is basically like each of these things, it's just doing that in real time. Yes. And we're just watching it check tests off. So that's pretty slick. That's uh, I'll, I'll admit I've like looked at Cypress a bunch and I keep saying, yeah, I'm going to set up Cypress and I've never done it. So I'm really excited that we're doing it today. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I think this is a, a pretty sweet, uh, sweet testing tool and it really like really low, low effort, high impact for that mm -hmm. first test. Um, generally, I mean, if you've got a really complex, um, uh, authentication thing and your entire stuff is behind authentication, then, um, Low effort may not be the word to describe it. Um, right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so what, what's cool is like, this is a legit browser. You want to, go ahead and try and open DevTools. Let's see, I'm in here. Let's open DevTools. I think you, you may have actually stopped the test running. Or, yeah, I don't, or know, what, like totally I don't know broke, what happened. It looks but, like it jumped out of the, the window. Oh, there, it's back. There, that was weird. <laughs> but yeah, so you can, you can see your console. You can look at the network tab. You can look at your elements. Um, you can actually interact with the app as it's running too. Um, so if there's a failure and it, it it'll just stop and leave you at the failure state and you yeah. can click around and, and make changes and stuff. It's, it's crazy. And then you can go back in time and, uh, and look yeah, at what the I, DOM looks like. Like if I jump back to one of these, I can like just reset to here, right? Uh, you can't like go back in time and say, start from here, but you can, um, like do a show a snapshot of what the DOM looks like at that time. So once the tests are all finished, uh, then you can you can go through and, and click on it. You see what the DOM looks like, and you can actually interact with the DOM at that point in time, um, which to me is just crazy. Oh wow! Um, yeah, check yeah. this out. So I'm here. I'm I'm at this side visit, or I can like come back up here and look here, and then see the things that happened at mm -hmm. each of these states. And so then it's you like can showing the, you can see the click. The right. Yeah. Oh man, that's <laughs> slick. Isn't that nuts? That that's so cool. Cool. All right. That's very, very cool. Oh, and then we're like checking to see that the drop down menu showed up. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. This is, this is very cool. So let's make one of these for real. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. So go back to your editor there. Do I just close and, this uh, now or? Uh, yeah, you can just close that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And hit stop on, on the upper right of there. Stop. Okay. And then go. Uh, so one of the files that it created was that cypress.json a little bit below. Cypress.json. It's empty JSON objects. We can configure that uh, later. Okay. That is where we're going to tell it where our app is running. So okay. um, our app, actually, we can do this right now. If you look at uh, the, the project, you can see what that configuration looks like over there if you want to. Um, or sorry, on the uh, GitHub repo that I sent you. Oh, gotcha. Um, so if you go, Let's just go, go back. back to the Cypress JSON there. Yep. Here. So I've got a couple things configured in there. Um, the base URL is what we care about. The integration folder. Um, I so by default they put their tests in Cypress slash integration, mm -hmm. and I think that's a misnomer. Um, and so I change it to Cypress slash E two E. So why don't we grab both of those? We'll pull them over to our config. Put those in. And then our base URL is going to be at 8,000. That's where uh, our Gatsby app is going to be hosted by default. Yeah, that would have probably caught me for an hour and a half. And yeah. so I'm assuming I need to create this E2E yeah, folder. Yeah, so you make an E2E folder. And then you can delete the integration folder. And the, the fixtures, this is kind of annoying, but if you open up fixtures, there's um, an example JSON. That file has to stay there. So just make it an empty uh, object um, and just leave it there. Um, maybe they've maybe they've changed that since I tried last, but um, every time I uh, leave that, they just add it again. So yeah, it's stupid. But you can delete the profile and users. We don't need those uh, for right now. 
Okay, so I, I'm not going to use this one. Yeah, you so don't need I that one. Not, no, not renaming it. I'm deleting it. Uh, let's delete. Okay. We'll delete this one. Okay. And then plugins. Um, that file is probably going to uh, be breaking some ESLint stuff. So um, this file also has to exist and it has to export a function, but this just allows us to uh, configure Cypress uh, dynamically, which is pretty mm. cool. But um, for each of those variables, you can fix the ESLint thing by adding an underscore um, as the first character in the variable. Um, and then we can see what those um, uh, what those values are going to be, but uh, we don't have to actually use those variables. Uh, yeah, so, so eventually, if, maybe if I'll we come wanted to do and we'll, we'll add some config or something, okay. but we don't need it right now. Okay. So let's pop and this then... Open. Uh, screenshots, we're going to want to add this to our git ignore because I don't want to, uh, actually, you could probably delete the, the folder because we're not going to be taking screenshots anyway. Okay. Um, sweet. And then support, um, this one is where you can add custom commands. And we'll probably, today we probably won't add any custom commands, but I'll probably add some eventually. So if you go to the commands folder, uh, this is how you can like add or override um, certain commands that Cypress has. Uh, we actually, oh, you know what we? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you can, because um, every application is different on how it does certain common things like login. Mm -hmm. So you can add uh, specific commands for that. We are going to add some commands though, um, in, in a manner of speaking. Okay. So go ahead, go to your browser, and uh, just Google um, Cypress testing library. There you go. Okay, so this is a project that I created um, that is pretty legit. And um, yeah, we're gonna install this. If you scroll down a bit, it'll show you that, um, how to install and use this thing. Um, so yeah, you'll wanna add it to your dev dependencies. And then the usage, you just put um, a, a simple import statement um, in the commands file. Okay, so yarn add Cypress testing library. We'll get that rolling. And then I'm going to import this into Cypress support commands. Yep. And that was here. I'm already That's looking where you're at. at. So we'll just drop that in here. You can get rid of all those comments too. We don't need those. Okay. Sweet. So this is going to give us uh, some things that I really like from uh, that I, I use in Cypress testing library. So some additional commands by default, Cypress comes with stuff like get and um, uh, uh, yeah, several others. But I, I pretty much only use these because they're a lot um, um, a lot easier. So like get by text and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So there, there's a comment that just came in. Um, Zero one Pollux is saying is asking when should one start writing tests. Um, I think the early you earlier you start writing tests, the better. Uh, the answer to that question is going to depend on a lot of things. Um, so, like nothing, nothing matters more than um, uh, at, at least in the world of our like building software and and like getting paid for it and what whatnot. Nothing matters more than shipping, right? Mm. So, like you, you gotta ship uh, your stuff. Like nobody's going to pay you for a wonderful test suite uh, for an app that doesn't work. So, um, uh, it, it needs to be like you. You need to make some prior prioritization around mm. here. Um, but uh, yeah, the um, the earlier you can start testing, the better because it, it's. Um, a lot easier to add tests to a small project than it is to add tests to a big project. Mm -hmm. And it's easier to, um, to evolve that test suite into what becomes a big project. So that and, is And this that. is kind of like one of the, the core, um, like one of the core things that you talk about with React testing library. And I assume with the Cypress testing library is this idea of writing tests that don't have to change when your code changes. Yes. Yep. And so if you're using the right tools, then hopefully, um, so long as your business requirements don't change and like, so long as you're not making drastic changes to the way your app works, you shouldn't have to visit um, your tests uh, at all as you're making changes. Um, and like, 
uh, refactorings to your code base. Awesome. Uh, and especially with with a simple end-to-end -end test like what we're going to do, um, this one should hopefully never have to be touched, like pretty much ever, unless I do a major re rework of the whole site. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and typically your end-to-end -end tests are going to behave like a user anyway, and they're going to be like, you know, just imagine what is a user going to do when they come to this site? They're going to, you know, maybe click on this link. They're going to click on this link. They're going to like go look at this thing. Um, and, and that's what our, our end to end test is going to look like. Cool. Um, because we'll, we'll do the more specific, um, use case stuff with our integration and our end to end tests. Okay. So cool. Now we are all set. Let's go ahead and, um, in that E to E folder, let's add a, uh, smoke.js, uh, for a smoke test. Okay. Um, and, and then, and for uh, asking for a friend who's definitely not me, what is a smoke test? <laughs> <laughs> a smoke test? Yeah, yeah, sure. A smoke test is like uh, uh, just um, a way to say, hey, things are working um, properly at, from a high level perspective. Gotcha. So if you see smoke, then you know that there's a fire. Um, you may ah. not know exactly where the fire is or whatever, but. Um, you, you know that there's a problem. And that's all that this test is going to be. Okay. And it's just here to say, um, if this test is passing, then we're probably doing okay. If it's failing, we're definitely not. Okay. That's, that's the idea behind this test. So um, um, Cypress uses Mocha under the hood to do its, um, uh, like the, as the testing framework. So you mm -hmm. have describe blocks and it blocks. Let me send you an example. Um, from my uh, my material in testingjavascript.com. Um, this is the calculator test. The, the app that we test in this project is just a, a calculator. Um, and we have a describe and an int block. And then in here, we do sci.visit. And then we interact with the, the calculator and, and then make a couple of assertions. So okay. uh, this will hopefully be a good place to start. You can just copy this. And, and uh, then we can make some modifications to it if you want to do it that way. Yeah, I so I I'm actually like one of the best ways that I've ever found to learn is to just write things by hand. So I'm going to I'm going to do a describe mm. and this is just going to be like the site so opens. It, yeah, like um app works <laughs> or <laughs> it, or yeah, the that I guess that would be the um the test um the test name. So you can describe the app. Um so just say app. Okay. And, and then, then we're going to say it, it, and then it works. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really care too much about these test names. <laughs> okay. If that's not obvious. Um, cool. And, then and so we're then we're going do... to want to visit the app and we'll just go to, to the homepage. So slash is fine. And um, Cypress knows where to go because we configured the base URL in that Cypress.json. That's and right. So yeah. So in this Cypress.json everything that we're saying. So when we say visit, it's just that we say slash and it's going to visit slash. That's exactly right. Got it. Okay. So we're going to visit there and let's just start with that. Um, we'll okay. have to figure out how to get ESLint to work with this. Um, but uh, yeah, go ahead and in your terminal, you can run um, yarn sci open. Yep. And let's, let's see this magic work. All right. So it's open. We have our and you can smoke click test. on that one or you can run all specs. Either well, one let's works. Let's just let's click the run all specs. Okay. Visits. There we go. It loaded the site. Yeah, sweet. So now you can again you can interact with it. You can click on different things and whatever. Those those socket um, requests that you're seeing on the left, that's just Cypress saying, hey, the app made these requests. And mm -hmm. I'm sure you know what those requests are for. Mm -hmm. um, that's a hot module replacement um, stuff from Gatsby. So that's establishing the hot HMR stuff. This is because we're running in development mode. We're also, if we have time, I don't know if we'll have time, but if we do, then um, we'll add some scripts for running um, CI. Um, and so we'll mm -hmm. run the build and then we'll run Cypress on the built files um, yeah. that will have like a, a little local server and this will happen uh, during CI. So we'll, what we're going to do here is um, I think let's just have a, us click on the about link and then we'll verify that, some, uh, that stuff 
work or exists in the about page properly. And that will ensure that not only can we get to the home page, but also we can get to the about screen. And it looks like we can't. <laughs> so that's not good. Um, I wonder what's going on there. Um, Let's see. Maybe the the app did it crash on us? No, that's yeah. Right. Interesting. Yeah, let's go back to Cyprus. Um, it's this one. Oh, there we go. Oh, whoops. Let's just try that again. Maybe it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe it did something goofy on us. Let's see. There Technology it goes. Yeah, it must have. There we go. It must have crossed wires there. Okay, so let's yeah. <laughs> uh, let's go back here. Don't cross the streams. <laughs> uh, so yeah, because we have Cypress testing library installed, uh, we can chain a, a new command onto Cypress right after the visit uh, that okay. is get by text and we'll get by text about. And I like to use, oh. you can use a string there, but I actually prefer to use a regex um, and have it in ignore case. Um, and the reason I like that is because um, I like to try is to keep this? my tests as like, um, free of implementation detail as possible. And I feel like casing is kind of implementation detail that the user doesn't care about. Sure. This could be all caps about, this could be all lowercase, this could be, you know, the B is capitalized. That would be weird, but like it would still work and that'd be fine. So um, that's why I generally prefer to use the regex there. So we can get that. And is, then is this the right we'll flag? Chain, <laughs> yeah, and, and with the ignore flag, yep. Okay. And then we'll chain the dot click on that. So uh, click on... That thing. Now you can go ahead and save that and, and uh, go back to the Cypress and we'll see that magic happen. Okay. And while we're running that, uh, something funny just came through the chat. There is a, uh, the, the history of smoke testing is that, um, let's see, I'm just going to read this. The term smoke testing, it is said, came to software testing from a similar type of hardware testing in which the device passed the test if it did not catch fire or smoke the first time it was turned on. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's amazing thank you kyle gill for for sharing that that's uh that's wonderful all right so we've got our updated smoke test let's run this uh everything in software is something like that you know like uh yeah it's that's hilarious cool yeah so um cool we got to the about page that's excellent yeah so and we, we can, can see and like this is what's really cool about this is is so we're seeing what we're doing. We're visiting the homepage. It loads everything. We get the about. So we get by text the about, which uh, is what's highlighting the the about link. And then we're clicking on that, and you can see that little red dot on the the about. And then it loads up the new URL. And that's just, that is really slick that that is that is that is happening. Yeah, um, man. Well, so go ahead and click on step number two there, and get by text, and then open up your dev tools. And you can inspect what this uh, page looks like um, right there. You can see, oh, OK, so that's what it looks like. That's why I couldn't click on it or whatever you know, whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. It looks yeah. kind of funny, though. This looks really oh, you know what? oh, this I think is the highlight in the wrong. It's uh, in the wrong window. It's it's inspecting the um, the actual highlight that it drew. Yeah, so let me that's, oh, that's if right, I get yeah. here, then I can. Here's the <laughs> that's here's right. the I, I should have known. There you go. So you can say, oh, that like the href is wrong or whatever. And if we had time, I don't think we will. But if we had time, I'd show you how we can set up uh, the uh, React dev tools. And you can look at the React tree in here and stuff. It's it's crazy how cool this is. Yeah, um, it's really nice. So we, we aren't making any assertions here. So let's make one assertion on that about page. Okay. Uh, we have an implicit assertion um, on our home page because we're clicking on the about link. And so that implies that the about link exists. But um, on the about page, we should make an assertion about something there. So if you go back, okay. let's take a look at what, what we can assert. You click on, uh, or you can unpin by clicking the exit or um, whatever. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> various okay. ways to do the same thing. Um, so yeah, maybe I think the, the top left there, it says about Kent C. Dodds. We could just assert that is where it's at, um, that text exists on the page. Okay. Um, and there are a couple of things that we could do uh, to assert that. Um, what we could just do is say get by text and then about can't see dots. And that is going to throw an error if it can't find it. So that will be uh, sufficient for our, our scenario is that can just serve as a. Um, and then yeah, this, this should be fine just by 
hitting the the case and sensor. Yeah, bit. that that should be fine too. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So let's stop that. We'll run it one more time. So actually, I, I meant to say this. It'll rerun your tests automatically. Um, oh, so. cool. Yeah. Cool. And we got a passing is. test. Found it. We got passing tests. Booyah. So this adds a huge amount of value in like very little, uh, little work. So there's just a little tiny bit more work we need to do because I don't, um, this won't commit anymore because we have that lint stage thing going on mm -hmm. and it's going to fail linting. So um, we're going to add another dependency here um, on the ESLint plugin Cypress is what it's called. ESLint plugin Cypress? Yeah. Okay. And while we're waiting for that to install, we'll pull up the here and we'll also drop it in the Twitch chat. Um, so cool. And this is just going to kind of declare the globals and the things yep. that we need. Cool. So once that installs and it does, if I close and reopen this, oh, I need to actually configure this, don't I? Uh, yeah, so we'll just add it to the tail end is fine. Or actually, you know what would be better is I only really want those globals available inside my Cypress tests, right? So mm, if we go mm -hmm. up to that Cypress directory, you can add an ESLint RC file in there. And is it um, supposed to be and like that will merge JS? all of the, the um, the configured rules in that file with the configured rules in the file at the root. Okay. And so we're just going to do uh, ESLint plugin Cypress. Mm -hmm. I think that should oh, do it. It should be an array, right? It, yes. Yeah, you can do either, but yeah, let's make it an array and you can just do Cypress if you want to. Oh, oh, oh really? sorry. And this will be plugins, not extends. Actually, if you go to the usage on the GitHub, just that, um, that example, oh, you mean like the, read the, read the docs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Should probably you just this one copy too. all that stuff. Yep. That's perfect. And that should work. So uh, I've actually had this not work for me before. So I'm a little bit nervous about this. But yes, it looks <laughs> looks like Got it's it. working. So that's good. Okay. Cool. So let's. So go ahead and commit this. Um, this is a great time to commit it because it's actually working, even though we don't have it running as part of our uh, build process or anything yet. Um, this is a really good place to stop and commit so that you can start getting some value. You can at least run it locally. Um, and then um, we can work on making that um, run on CI as well. So that, that would be the next step. Okay. So we've got that's pushed up to the PR. Um, and it looks like so is there, are there other things that you would want to do inside of this test, like other things that we would want to assert? Yeah, so uh, I, don't, I don't know. The, I don't think so. I, I think I'm probably pretty happy with this. Uh, we could navigate to every page and just make sure we can get to every page. Um, that, that might be useful, but I, I, I feel like it, um, that's pretty... Um, I'm pretty positive that uh, all of those pages are going to be there and, and it would mm -hmm. be pretty strange for me not to be able to load all of those pages. Mm -hmm. um, for like, if, if Gatsby compiles, I'm pretty confident that all of those pages are going to be there because I trust my abstraction, right? Um, and so I, I don't feel like I need to, to write tests for that. But, but we could and it would be pretty low effort to do that. Um, so if, like if somebody wanted to commit you know, if somebody watching the stream wanted to get their feet wet with Cypress, that'd be a great thing to do is, is to commit, like add a pull request to add a couple more pages mm -hmm. to this test. Yeah. Yeah. So like if, if I were to make any changes here, uh, to add more, I would just add another chain to get by text workshop and then, uh, assert that the title is, is there as well. Just the same way we just do like maybe seven or eight lines more of get by text, you know, navigation link, click on that. Uh, get by text, whatever that title is, and then click the next one and so on and mm, so forth. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that would get us some pretty good value with very low effort. Um, and, and the nice thing is that like, it means that not only does the, the page load, but it also, there are no JavaScript errors because Cypress is going to throw uh, or fail your test if there are any JavaScript errors on the page. 
And mm. so like that actually provides a pretty, like a really good deal of value. Um, yeah. Uh, just the fact that the thing builds in the first place also provides a great deal of value that I consider that to be a test as well, um, yeah. that it, it compiles and builds. Um, so well, cool. Um, so what would you like to add next? So we could do, um, make this work with CI, but I think, uh, to wrap us up, it'd be cool to, to set up uh, just one jest test, yeah. uh, to, to get us on that integration and unit, uh, spectrum. Mm -hmm. So, um, let's do that. Let's, you're going to yarn add as a dev dependency jest. And, uh, we'll do react testing library as well. Um, and that's probably all that we really need right now. Okay. And let's see, let's actually look up react testing library. And here it is. Dude, what is that thing you've got that think, your site, uh, think, like when you Google stuff? Let me see. I don't know, actually. Um, it looks like the search engine. Huh? Yeah, it's, oh, I bet this is like the, the SEO webmaster tools or whatever, whatever they yeah, call it. Yeah, that's interesting. I need to, I need to get on that. Um, cool. Okay. So. Um, so those are installed. Here is a link to React testing library in the chat and looking through it here. So what, like, maybe talk a little bit about, oh, that's not the one I was looking for. I was looking for this one. Yeah, for sure. Um, maybe talk a little bit about kind of what this is. So Jest, we know, is just kind of an assertion library. Um, or maybe we don't know that. Maybe we should talk about that. Yeah, too. so Jest is a... Uh, it's an assertion library, but it, it, more than that, it's actually a uh, testing framework or a test, yeah, test runner, testing platform. It's probably the best. Um, it's a delightful JavaScript testing framework with a focus on simplicity. It is fantastic. It is so good. I haven't, I haven't seen this uh, new uh, this new website design. This is this is slick. I like it. Yeah, yeah, it is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, it's it's really fast. Uh, in particular, on on big code bases, it's uh, it leverages like um, running your tests in parallel and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and those ex exception messages are so so nice. Um, yeah. So yeah, the the idea is you um, install it, you add a couple of uh, test files that match their uh, conventions, and you can configure those conventions. And then it just starts, it looks up all your tests and it starts running them. It's pretty sweet. So let's, okay. let's just go ahead and we'll add a, a quick test in the source directory. Source. So we're going to co-locate these tests because they uh, make sense to be co-located. Okay. Um, I didn't even think about this. Let's, let's go to components um, and we'll do forms. Is that, that's one that I know we have uh, something. Yes, yeah, subscribe probably. Let's, let's look at this one. So if you scroll down here, let, I, I need to, I'll have this open too, so I can see if there's a good one. Um, Let's see, so we've for got- testing purposes. Yeah, no, this probably won't be good. Looks like we'd well, have no, to- no, no, we could probably, we can probably make this work. Um, so yeah, let's do this. We'll do the, the subscribe one. There, there are two subscribe forms in there. That one on 125 is what is the one we're gonna test. Okay, and where would we so find this? So if you this? go scroll down to the bottom, that's what we're testing right there. Got it. Yeah, this is actually a really great example. So um, right in that forms directory, create a underscore underscore test under uh, test underscore underscore. <laughs> so uh, that's that's the uh, file name convention. Under, yep, that's the one. Um, and then inside of that, create a file that is the same name of the file we want to test. So subscribe. Okay. And then you'll import React from React because we're going to be using JSX in here, so making React elements. You'll want to import um, render as a named import from React testing library. Oops. Cool. Okay. And then we'll import subscribe as a, I think that's a named import. Maybe it's the default. I can't remember. It's the default um, from, uh, from there. Got it. And the observant um, 
individual will have noticed that we're using React hooks in here, which is cool because we can actually test those using React testing library. Um, and I think that's that's kind of fun. Yeah. Um, oh, other another fun fact is the React team officially has endorsed React testing library as a way of testing your React apps. So oh, there's that too. Congrats on that. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. So um, what do we want to test here? Um, we could test a, a couple of things. We actually do have some validation um, and that would be cool to test. But before we get into any of the different edge cases we want to cover, I think it would be good to make sure that our tests actually run. Um, so I always start with a test that is just like a throwaway test. You just call it temp or something and then don't throw any errors. Is this uh, right? I is also, it... with, um, with Jest, I don't use describe blocks. Um, I actually just put everything at the root and I, uh, the function you call is test. Okay. Give it a test title and then a, an arrow function for uh, okay. the callback. And the so title, this one is... you just do temp or whatever. It's just, this is just a throwaway. Okay. And we're going to just And then do... um, just like, it doesn't need to have anything in it. Um, so I'll just save this. Or yeah, you could expect true to be true or all that you need for a, a passing test is a function that doesn't throw an error. That's all. Oh, really? So, yep. Um, okay. So then we need to actually set this up so that it runs. Yeah. So we'll go to our package.json and add a test script. Okay. And just jest, that's all you need. Cool. Yarn test. Whoa. Oh, that's right. I actually do have tests. <laughs> Dang it. Um, this is this is sort of a good thing and sort of a frustrating thing. Uh, so I have a, a package inside of this um, called uh, Remark Embedder, which is a something that I'm going to pull out and probably open source eventually. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a plugin that I have for my project. Um, but it has tests and it has configuration already uh, set up. Okay. And uh, yeah, so we're, we're experiencing a little issue because... Um, Should we just ignore the plugins directory for now yeah hold on a second okay um oh yeah because it's, it's TypeScript. So I pulled this, right? yeah it's in typescript <laughs> so the reason that this is failing um is i actually initially created this project as a typescript project and i had it all working and running mm. and everything and then finally i was like hey i kind of want to just ship something and so that's when i i grabbed egghead starter and i mm -hmm. i pulled that in and then I just copied my uh, Remark and Better plugin that I wrote, and that had all these tests and everything, and it was working with TypeScript. And that's why this is all blowing up, is because um, these TypeScript files, uh, we don't have anything configured to support the TypeScript stuff. So um, why don't we do this? Because I don't want to spend time fixing this. So go to the plugins Remark and in Better, um, and we're going to just change that test directory to be um, something else. Yeah, just rename that to tests. Um, yeah, old Not tests, tests or whatever. <laughs> Not tests. Exactly. All right, let's try so this good. again. <laughs> okay, so we're going to run into an error. Um, and the problem is that um, we can't use import statements in Node. And Jest doesn't know that we want to transform this with Babel. Okay. Um, normally, this isn't a problem because you're going, if you're using Babel, you're going to have a Babel configuration um, mm -hmm. in your project. And uh, Jest will see that and say, oh, well, let's just transpile this with Babel. But because we're using Gatsby, we don't have a Babel configuration in our project. And so um, there is a solution to this. I can't remember what it is, but let me find out. Because um, I did have this working before I, uh, when I was working with uh, TypeScript. And I've got that branch hanging out somewhere. So let me find that really quick. And I'll see what I did in my uh, Jest configuration. It looks like we just need to install Babel Jest. Let's see. Jest config. Yeah, okay. So um yeah, there there are two things. Well actually, it's probably a really easy way to 
Oh no, you've got it. You you all have the docs and stuff. You do this stuff all the time. <laughs> all right, so let's uh, let's do this. Let's let's follow the React doc or the Gatsby docs here, um, and they say that we should do a yarn add dev. We already have Jest, so we'll do Babel Jest. Uh, React test render. That's not something we need, right? Yeah, we don't need that. And we'll get the Babel preset Gatsby, although I don't know that we need that either. And then this yeah, identity probably, object proxy. Yeah, it's already installed probably, but we're fine adding it too. And then identity object proxy. We can I, I can add that later. Probably don't need it right now. Okay. Um, and then we're going to do a just config. And this one, I probably am just, oh wait. Yeah, we're not testing any styles. We'll, we'll skip those. Yeah, we, we won't need those probably. Not doing those. <laughs> um, so we need to transform our JavaScript. That looks like the biggest thing. Yep. All right, so let's just copy this out and we'll delete a couple we'll things. We'll just remove the stuff we don't want. Yep. Do jest.config. Uh, let's see, jest.config.js. And we're going to drop out this. We are going to leave that. I think that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, Except so let's, instead of just process, like right there on line three, let's add a, before that, we'll add a slash test because I don't want that in my root directory. So we'll put that file in this, uh, a test directory. Okay. Well, let's do test with a S. Okay. Yep. And then that's all good. This is all good. Um, test URL. I don't know that we actually need any yeah, of that. No, we'll leave that one in. Yep. Okay. And then the um, loader shim, are we going to... Loader shim. I don't Let's think look at gonna... what they need the loader shim for. Um, they're probably going to give us that file. But yeah, let, here, we'll first get that just process. We'll make that file in the um, test in directory. Tests. Yep. It'll be process, I think. Oh wait, did I screw it up? Just pre. Oh no, you got it. You got it. You did. Okay. Cool. Babel preset Gatsby. We're pulling in. Babel so for Jest. for people watching at home, home who are interested in how this would change for TypeScript, the only change that you'd need is uh, on that presets you'd add at Babel slash preset TypeScript, and that will make uh, your Babel compile TypeScript too. So it's pretty. Easy, unless you're using the TypeScript compiler and all that, then you can use uh, something else, but I don't do that. So, okay, we don't need that probably. Oh, I can add that later. Um, yeah, there's the setup files. If you scroll see. down a little bit more, I think that's the last thing we need. Okay, setup files. Let's see, um, list files that will be included before all tests are run. Um, I'm not sure what this is. There's one more global that you need to set. So I'm not sure what that loader thing is. Do you know what that loader thing is? I don't know what this loader thing is. Let's leave it um, off and we'll we'll see if we need it um, when we start. Oh, and then, yeah, and then they've got like different things you can mock. So we can, mm. we can, if we need to, we'll, we'll get into that. But let's see what happens if we yeah. just, let's just run the test. Yeah. There we go. Picked up the right one. And picked up the right one. It didn't like it because yeah, we are going to need the identity opt proxy thing. Oh, because yeah, it's going to pull in all these these files. All right, yeah. Gatsby, your docs. You knew better <laughs> than we did. Should have okay. followed along. Thought we could get away with it. Let's see. Grab this one. Yeah, we need this eventually anyway. So, so we'll just put this back in the. config okay and then i'm also going to add this uh yarn add develop identity object i can proxy. tell that uh I, i'm pretty sure that kyle wrote this tutorial because he uses template literals for everything he loves template mm -hmm. literals yeah <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe uh, he wrote some parts of it because I see double quotes here too. <laughs> yeah, I, I think over time our our prettier config has been um, 
mutating, and so it, uh -huh. everything gets a little a little goofy as we go. My guess is that you don't have Prettier configured for Markdown, um, and uh, because yeah. if Prettier were configured for Markdown, it would format all of these the same. But that's okay. okay. So it is gonna make. Cool. Me... Let's, let's try this. I think we should be good now. Uh, we might need that file mock, but I kind of think we'll be okay. I think we. I think we do need to to do it because it's it's uh, mocking all of the like. Oh yeah, yeah. Other that's things. True. So okay. I guess. So it's putting it in the mocks directory. Let's put it in the source mocks directory. Well, no, no. Do you want it in source mocks? Do you want it in tests? Yeah, we'll put it in source mocks. I don't like having things at the root if I don't have to. So yeah, I I agree with that. So that that seems good to me. So let's uh, create. And actually, you know what? It, it shouldn't even be in the mocks directory. Go back. Uh, it doesn't need to be in a mocks directory. Uh, so change it to tests um, and then file mock. Yeah, that's even better. Cool. That works for me. So let's hide this one. Uh, where did tests go? Here, and it's going to be file mock.js. We're going to drop. I think that Perfect. was it. That was it. So we'll save that. And then what else did we need? Um, I think we should be good now. We we have the rest of that stuff, except for that loader thing. But I'm pretty sure we don't need that. We'll we'll see. I'm going to eat my words <laughs> here in a second when it doesn't work. All right, let's do it. We're going to do. The test. Aha. Okay. Yeah. So we've got testing up and running. And cool. um, so, yeah, there's there's a little bit of a ceremony to get that rolling. But, um, you know, if you if you just trust the docs and copy paste and <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> yeah. um, cool. actually so somebody and maybe somebody at Gatsby could create a preset and then uh, the Jess config could just have preset um, as a, a argument or a uh, configuration property and it would just all be preset um, mm. magically it would be great so like all of this stuff could be managed um, within uh, Gatsby package or something that'd be pretty cool yeah that's a good idea I, I think th this is one of those things that we have to like we're just starting to think about testing and so mm. Um, learning, uh, let's see, actually Dustin from our, our core team is, uh, saying that he's wanted to do that for a while. So, nice. <laughs> so it looks like that, that is something that will probably at some point, um, be a thing, but yeah, it, testing Very is cool. like becoming much more important to us now, especially as the, the tool is maturing. Um, yes. yeah. okay. So I think cool. at this point we can actually test this, right? Yeah. Yeah. We can totally test that, that form. So um, let's think about this, uh, or stay on the form really quick. So okay. we'll think about this as a, as a manual tester. That's how you should be thinking about testing stuff is if I were a manual tester, how would I go about testing this component and, um, go ahead and enter, um, or, or leave out a first name, enter a, a bad email and then click subscribe. So like a non email, just like, Nope. Yeah. Oh, well, like, no, like that, a not even a valid, valid email, email. <laughs> but yeah, hit subscribe and you'll get, um, Actually, Browser that should show up, so we, we should, <laughs> I should fix that. But you'll see that invalid email address there. Um, so we could test that. Um, mm. I think what I want to test, though, with the, the time that we have left is just the happy case. Okay. Um, so, uh, and actually, we, we honestly, we don't have, I need to get going here pretty soon myself. So um, let's just, we'll, we'll do a quick test that um, ensures that the fields are there, um, and it would, take a little bit too long to also test that subscribe does what we want it to. So if you go to, uh, so we have a first name field and an email field. Let's just verify that those things exist. Um, okay. So we'll go to our test and subscribe. And then um, here we're going to use, um, yeah, we can say test um, uh, subscribe uh, renders first name and email. Okay. And then you're going to call render with subscribe as a just JSX, so a React element. Does it need any props? Then, nope, no props for that one. Okay. And then um, render is going to return an object for you, and I always just destructure the object, so I never assign the object a variable name. Um, 
And what we want are to get fields by their label. So get by label text is what you're going to get. Okay. And then you can actually also um, pull out debug as well. So on the next line, just invoke debug. And this is a function. Yep. And then you can run the test and see what that what that does. If you run yarn test dash dash watch, then that'll start you up in watch mode. Okay. There we go. It's almost like you're like your computer's doing a lot of stuff. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, okay, so this is cool. So it's uh, it's pulling out kind of what was rendered. So you're dropping it effectively into just a div, yeah? Yep, yep. Okay. it just gets rendered into a div. You can see join the newsletter. We can see um, that object proxy thing working. Yeah, <laughs> well, actually that one is the CSS is actually an object. Um, oh, we're okay. using emotions plugin for that. Got it, okay. So, um, um, so actually, our Jest configuration isn't configured to transform that properly, because um, our our Babel transform is just using Babel or uh, Gatsby's preset. So I probably hmm. need to make a change to um, uh, to our configuration there. But we to I can do like that a, later. Like a Jest pre or a Babel preset for emotion, you mean? Yeah, just have to whatever whatever changes I make in my Gatsby config for the Babel preset, I mm -hmm. need to make in my Jest config. What would be cool is if um, Gatsby exposed a, a way to get the final config that Gatsby actually uses. So after mm. it resolves my config and everything, give me what that final config is or a mechanism for getting that final config. That's um, a that would be that's a good note, Dustin. If you're still watching. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. yeah, no, this is great. So then what we want to do is you said get by label text. Mm -hmm. And so we're looking for this label and then are we, do, do we just query by that or? Yeah. So our, it looks like, um, the label is wrapping both the, uh, first name input as well as the input mm -hmm. and the lab, the input has an ARIA label on it. Um, I never noticed that. <laughs> so uh, that's not very typical. Normally, you're, uh, if you're going to nest it, then that's that's fine. That's also not super typical. But um, you typically don't need to have a label. If you're nesting, you won't need a for attribute on the label because it, it's automatically associated. Right. Um, and if you have a label associated, you typically don't need an aria label attribute either. And it so, looks like we don't um, have an ID on here either, so the, the for wouldn't even be working because there's not oh yeah yeah the four isn't isn't associated at all so um why don't we just go ahead and um hmm yeah because i'm not sure how, what how we're gonna do this because things aren't quite wired up correctly and i've got to get going but um the the fix for this would be to um fix things so that they are associating the labels properly um, and then uh, do a get by label text to, and, and that will throw an error if it can't get that um, that thing. So, um, yeah. So we just have to move some things around. But yeah, I, I've got to get going um, anyway. So if you want to, you can keep working on this um, and uh, and get those. And, and you could even do the whole like let's mock the fetch API and and um, assert what happens when fetch is called and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah. Cool. So, I, yeah, I, so I think yeah. probably here, um, we, yeah, so I'm, I'm not sure. Get rid of the ARIA label, add an ID, and then, um, move the, the label out, uh, or move the, separate the label from the, um, input. So the input is not inside the label. That's probably what I would do. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, uh, Kent, feel free to to jump. Thanks so much. Um, where can people find you? Um, I guess probably on, the, uh, uh, you just search Kent C Dodds. You'll find me wherever you want to find me, wherever, wherever Kent C Dodds are sold. Um, yeah, right. yeah. So that, <laughs> here's, uh, go follow, go follow Kent on Twitter. Uh, definitely get on his Wait, newsletter. Gatsby is not following me. What? <laughs> Wait, Gatsby's not following you. Oh, well let's fix that. Um, <laughs> 
So You're not following Dan? Oh, Gatsby. <laughs> I think actually, I think the Gatsby account might only be following people who work for Gatsby. That might be what they're yeah, doing. Yeah, you can unfollow um, me. I was joking. <laughs> oh no. Oh no, Ken. It's it's official now. It's um, happened. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, go get on Kent's newsletter. He is a, a like nonstop fountain of excellent information. Um, so, uh, Kent, thank you so much for being here and we will post this up on YouTube once it's, uh, once it's done or we'll, we'll cool. wrap this up and get it going. So yeah. Hey, thank you so much for adding tests to my project. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, no problem. I'll, I'll wrap up this, uh, before I close the live stream, I'm going to wrap up getting this test to work. So, well, I'm going to spend another 15 minutes trying to get this test to work. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'll just tell you really quick, the, the biggest challenge you're going to have. And uh, so like what, what you can do and what I would accept um, it would be just fine is uh, just getting it to a state where you can get by label text uh, and just call those. Those are implicit assertions because if it can't get it, then it'll throw an error and that that will work just fine. And, and the error is really nice. Um, okay. If you want to take it all the way then um, you could um, enter in a value for the username or for the email and the um, first name. And then you would need to mock out window.fetch um, and, uh, and then make an assertion that window.fetch was called properly. So, um, Okay, yeah. I, I'm uh, probably just gonna get to the label text. Uh, assuming yeah. that, I'm assuming that's what 15 minutes is gonna get me. Um, yeah, probably. But yeah, so I'll uh, I will I will tackle this, get this get this submitted today as a as a PR, and uh, we'll put this video up online later today. Awesome, man! Thank you. All right, thanks, Kent. We'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye, everyone. Okay, so let's talk through what I'm doing here. Um, I have the field. I'm just pulling it outside the label. Uh, I am. Let's see, uh, oh, Marcy's in the chat, which is great because I'm doing accessibility stuff. And so uh, anything that Marcy says, we will take as, as Bible, Bible truth here. So um, let's see, oh, why did it make, <laughs> uh, so my Zoom video here is, um, let me stop sharing and we'll end this meeting because we don't need it anymore. And that should change, so let me also switch this over to here, and that's a bigger video. Uh, okay, so let's do this then. So yeah, what, uh, uh, what Marcy has said in the chat, which I'm gonna stick with, is, um, let's see. Oh yeah, so uh, let's do, that's a good suggestion from John Church, is let's make the test red, and then we'll fix it after that. So I'm gonna go into my test, close a bunch of this stuff that we're not looking at anymore. So I'm going to close this. And now we've just got our two files. So I'm going to keep these here and let's write a test. Uh, I'm going to expect get label. I'm not even reading, reading the docs here, get by label text. And let's do a regex because that was what he said to do. And what we're looking for is first name. And we're going to, to exist. It's the, it's the appropriate expect to exist. Is that a thing? Um, we want, we expect it to be truthy, to be defined, to, hmm, I don't know what this should be, uh, to have length, let's try that, to have length one, I don't know, let's, let's see what happened, um, rerunning that test, it should fail, it does, so it received a value And let's see, received has type of object. And I don't know, what if I just do to be truthy? To be truthy. And let's see what happens. 
cool, so that worked. Um, that worked better than I thought it would. So let's look at why it worked. Uh, what we're doing is we are saying, um, looking for the first name, we're saying uh, render this component, the subscribe component, and then get by label text. So it's looking at the label, and then the text is here. So we're making sure that we've got the label text. And I'm gonna dump that. Um, we're checking that the label text matches first name. If it didn't, so let's make it fail. Wait, why did it still pass? Okay, and so, expect, yeah, doesn't match. Okay, so this is what we wanted. We want it to fail when we don't have when we don't have a match. So I can change that back to first name. And then if I do expect email to be truthy. Let's see, um, Dustin is saying that it is a element. Um, I don't know if it does. Let's let's find out. I have I have literally no idea what any of this is. Let's um, let's do a DOM element assertion. So we've got it's going to have a name. So the, I I don't think this is actually what we want to test. That that's not it. It's this one. Um, so I don't think we want to test that because that would be like testing an implementation detail. But let's just play and see if we can uh, if we can make this work. So let's get the ID. And we'll do expect, uh, like, I think we can just do this, to equal first name. And then get out here. Ooh, that's cool. And just to make sure that that's actually doing what we expect it to do. If I break it, it says we're expecting the ID to equal, but what we're getting is first name. So good tip, Dustin. Um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna assert that. Well, actually, no, we're not. We're just gonna make sure that it exists. We want it to. We want to make sure that this exists because you know later, you might switch email opt-in providers and it would use you know like f name instead of first name. Um, and that's, uh, that's an implementation detail, as Kent would say. So, uh, I, I mean, I think you could do snapshot testing here. I, I don't know, you know, that's the, the reason that I had. Um, wait, hold on. Leonard is saying that you can leave out to be truthy. That's no way. You can't just do like an empty expect. Come on. Does that really work? Okay, I'm gonna do something that should break. And it's expecting, unable to find a label with a text of first name, no? Okay, all right. So cool, that's all we need then. We can just do expect that we can get the label. Um, so yeah, I don't know if, if the, it would be better to do snapshot testing here. Um, I guess, you know, we're at this point, we're just trying to make sure that they exist. What we're ultimately trying to do is, um, is end up with a, uh, like we, you know, we just want to, we, we would like to mock out that this works because what's going to end up happening is when you subscribe, it's going to send off a request. So we would want to mock out the, the subscribe call, which is going to be up here somewhere. Um, handle submit is up here. And so this would, we'd have to like mock out fetch and do a bunch of things to make sure that that did what we expected. Um, we're not gonna do that today because we are just about at time. And we've also lost Kent, which means that I'm operating without an adult, which is never a good time. Um, but yeah, so anyways, the uh, this kind of gets us where we're going. Um, and what's cool about this too is that now if we do something like, let's go back into our package.json. Um, if we look at the scripts, we've got this uh, this test and this sci open. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to do 
no, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. We would put this into like CI where when you push this up, we'd use something like circle CI or Travis or Jenkins or whatever to execute this test and also this test. And over time we would want to get that to the point where we, um, where we're able to, you know, feel very confident that the app is working. Um, and the goal of this is over time to end up at a position where the tests are giving us a really, really clear indication that we've changed the behavior of the app. Um, something that Kent talks about a lot is this idea of not testing implementation details. So again, we don't really care if the ID or the name of this field changes, you know, if it, if it changes from first name to F name, I'm going to, I need to remember to fix this so that it doesn't break. Um, if I go back into watch mode, you know, so if we, I think if we switch to like MailChimp or if we switch to ConvertKit or something, those names are going to change. Um, now, why did that break? What, what did I break? We've got first name. It, no form control. Oh, it's because I broke the, the ID is why. So I'd have to also change it up here to F name. That's the wrong, that's, what am I doing? Okay. So if I come back out here now, I've got a form. Yeah, so it's it's associated with F name, um, and it continues to work despite the fact that we actually changed under the hood what the uh, what the field's ID was because that's an implementation detail that matters to the system that we're sending it to, but it doesn't actually matter to the 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 React component. Um, and with that, I have now said all the things that I know about testing. And we've lost Kent, and it's coming up on 10.30. So um, thank you, everyone, for watching today. This will be posted on YouTube a little bit later on. Like I said, go follow Kent. Um, check out his, get on his newsletter, get on his Twitter. And uh, definitely go check out this testingjavascript.com course. It is, um, it was wonderful to get a little insight there. Um, and then last question just came in is, uh, what about that end-to-end -end test? And the end-to-end -end test is exactly to allow us to test fewer implementation details. So what we're doing is, you know, looking for things, clicking on them. So, you know, theoretically speaking, we could go in and do this, um, this submission test with Cypress. Uh, the, the nice thing about the, um, the Jest test is that we're testing an individual component and not the whole page. So let's, whoops, not that, Chrome, here we go. Running all specs, I'm gonna run this and then I'm gonna stop talking and we're gonna, we're gonna call this done. So um, this is us running through our test that we made. All good, everything's working. Um, we can see that that works. And we just ran all of our Jest tests. Those are working. Let me make sure that I reverted that change about what the field name was called so that I don't break his subscription. Okay, that's good. Um, and we also added these pre-commit hooks so that when I add all of this testing stuff, let's do it and get commit. We'll say test, add just tests for subscribe form plus config. It's gonna run our pre-commit hook and that's going to make sure that all of our linting and ESLint and all that stuff is, oh no, we need uh, ESLint just config. Thought I was done. Um, ESLint just. ESLint plugin just. So let's grab. I already have ESLint, so I can do yarn add D ESLint plugin just. Okay, and then I'm going to go into my uh, ESLint, and this might not actually be what Kent wants, but I'm going to just set this up so that it works the way we expect. Okay. Did any of this stuff get committed? So I'm gonna add, let's just run that commit again. 
And now our test should run. Damn it. Why aren't you working? Yes, Lint. That should work. Hmm. Yeah, let's uh let's see what I did wrong. Plugins jest. Did I miss any steps? Plugins jest. Oh, I need the globals is what I need. So let's add those. Try that one more time. Hey, oh, okay. So then I can push and we'll put that up here. And somewhere, once this finishes on Kent's site, Nope, I set up a pull request. So here's the pull request. If you wanna see what we did today, I'll post this into the chat. And thank you everyone. I am going to stop talking now. Uh, we'll see you next week. I have, who is on the, who's on next week? This is, I'm pretty excited about it. We are gonna do uh, real-time web apps with Vladimir Novik from Hasura. Um, that's gonna be pretty fun. We're gonna, we're gonna get something to build in real time. Um, later on in March, we're going to do Auth0 with uh, Otto from the, the DevRel team there. And then on March 28th, I'm going to have Potch from Glitch, uh, who's a DevRel over there, teach us what the hell Glitch is. So I'm pretty excited about that one too, because I feel like Glitch is a big deal, but I don't understand it. Um, so thanks everybody for joining.